Physicists at the University of Toronto observed a strange quantum effect. Under certain conditions, atoms seem to react before absorbing light, suggesting a negative interaction time. While it doesn't imply time travel, it challenges our understanding of cause and effect in quantum mechanics. In this video, we'll break down what happened, how scientists are reacting, and what it reveals about the mysteries of time. The experiment, led by Ephraim Steinberg and Daniela Angulo, was designed to measure how long atoms remain in an excited state after absorbing and then re-emitting photons. Using ultra-cold rubidium atoms and carefully shaped laser pulses, the researchers examined the subtle dynamics of photon-atom interactions. In standard conditions, the delay between absorption and emission follows a predictable time scale. But the team noticed something unexpected when using sharply rising narrow light pulses. The calculated duration of atomic excitation was negative. Essentially, it seemed like the atom released energy before fully interacting with the incoming photon. This result, while counterintuitive, has a basis in established quantum optics. Photons behave not as point particles, but as probability waves. When these waves interact with atoms, especially under asymmetric pulse conditions, the group delay, the average time defined by the wave's envelope, can shift in ways that defy classical expectations. This includes producing a result that, mathematically, appears to be less than zero. What's important to understand is that this doesn't mean anything traveled backward through time. Instead, it reflects how quantum systems don't obey simple start-to-finish causality. The energy exchange still happens under quantum electrodynamics, but the way we define and measure that exchange can yield surprising outcomes. The experiment also accounted for known sources of error and repeated the results under controlled variations. The outcome was not an artifact, but a consequence of how quantum fields behave in the presence of steep light gradients. While the label negative time is provocative, what's being observed is a genuine feature of quantum systems under specific conditions, one that invites deeper investigation into how we define cause and effect in these realms. The term negative time has proven divisive while it draws attention to a non-classical result. Critics argue it can be easily misunderstood. Among them is physicist Sabina Hassenfelder, who described the effect as a misleading interpretation of group delay, a well-understood concept in optics. Group delay refers to the speed at which the peak of a pulse moves through a medium. In some systems, especially when pulses are distorted or reshaped by a material, this delay can appear faster than light or even negative. But such behavior doesn't transmit usable information and doesn't break the rules of relativity. It's a mathematical consequence of how the pulse's phase evolves, not evidence of time reversal. The researchers acknowledge this and clarify that their use of negative time isn't meant to suggest actual backward motion through time. Instead, it's a label for a result that contradicts everyday intuition, highlighting how photon behavior in quantum systems challenges classical assumptions. Language in science often carries these tensions. Terms like strange quarks, spooky action, or virtual particles aren't descriptive but serve to signal conceptual gaps between classical language and quantum reality. In this case, Steinberg and Angelo argue that negative time is a shorthand for a valid quantum behavior that traditional terminology doesn't fully capture. Their data shows that under specific measurement techniques, the apparent time between input and output can flip signs, not because time itself reverses, but because the probability distribution for the interaction includes values on both sides of zero. This result fits within the broader behavior of quantum systems. When not directly observed, particles do not follow deterministic paths. Instead, they evolve in probabilistic clouds where outcomes emerge statistically rather than causally. One of the most important takeaways is that quantum time isn't always linear or unidirectional. In classical mechanics, time is continuous and uniform. 
but in quantum systems, the timing of events is subject to uncertainty and interference. Interactions can't always be pinned to exact sequences, especially when wave functions overlap or evolve non-linearly. This affects more than just academic theory. In quantum communication and sensing, precise control over photon timing is essential. Understanding how these anomalous delays work can improve how we build and synchronize quantum networks. For example, compensating for or even utilizing group delay effects could lead to more accurate quantum clocks, filters, and detectors. There's also a theoretical dimension. The experiment adds another data point to the ongoing discussion about time symmetry. Many fundamental equations in physics are symmetric for time, meaning they work the same forwards and backwards. Yet in practice, we experience a strong arrow of time. Experiments like this, which reveal ambiguous or unexpected timing behaviors, offer a way to probe where that arrow might break down or emerge from quantum foundations. Still, we should be realistic. This finding doesn't mean causality is violated or that we can build time-reversing devices. The observed effect falls well within the established bounds of quantum field theory. It's not a revolution, but a refinement, one that deepens our understanding of light-matter interactions. As for next steps, Steinberg and Angulo plan to expand the experiment to other atomic systems, explore different pulse profiles, and refine their theoretical models. Meanwhile, other labs will likely attempt to replicate the findings to validate or challenge the initial results. The University of Toronto's experiment doesn't break physics. It shows how quantum systems can defy our expectations. Photon-atom interactions sometimes appear to happen in negative time, highlighting the probabilistic nature of time at the quantum level. It's not time travel, but a reminder that quantum rules are far more flexible than classical ones.